Hey gang, if you're anything like me, and statistically you probably are, then you almost certainly have a Steam library with hundreds and hundreds of video games in it, most of which you've never even touched. Honestly, I blame the Steam Deck. Ever since I got this thing, I see a Steam cell and I think, oh yeah, that'd be fun to play on deck, and I can take it anywhere, so surely I'll have time to play it, surely, right? This has resulted in, this year especially, a staggering number of new games being piled onto the already fairly large mountain of stuff that I want to play. This isn't even taking into account non-Steam games and even non-PC games. Spider-Man 2, anyone? I've owned The Last of Us for five years on PS4, it's been remastered since and released on PC, and I still haven't played a second of it. Probably because the PC port is absolute ass, but I digress. See, the problem is that I don't really go anywhere. I work from home, so I have no commute to play like an hour or two a day. I occasionally go on holidays and get a lot of hours logged there, but that's still probably a week or two of the whole year. And that is assuming that I spend every single moment of the holiday on this thing, which kind of defeats the purpose of going on holiday, or so I'm told. Now, of course, I could use it in bed, but all that ends up doing is keeping me up far too late. And when your dog has a body clock, meaning that he wakes up at 7.30 a.m. every single morning about to piss his pants, that leaves you feeling pretty rough the next day when you have to get up so he doesn't piss on the floor. And then even if I do get time to play, I get hit with the dreaded choice overload. There are just so many games I want to play, they end up spending most of my time trying to decide which one I'm going to play, and then the time spent playing, in the back of my mind I'm thinking, well, did I make the right decision? Should I be spending this time doing something else? And I don't even enjoy what I'm actually playing. But I've decided that enough is enough. I need to find a way to get through some of these games. And then the depths of my sadness, I stumbled across Daryl Talks games and his videos on clearing out the backlog. They are really worth watching because they're just, well, really well-made videos. And I'm massively taking inspiration from them. But the main takeaways I got from these two videos were two things. Takeaway one, don't make it into a task or work because then you're not playing the games to have fun. You're playing them to check a box. And didn't we all actually start playing video games to have fun? And number two, make a spreadsheet of games that you want to play, ordering them from most to least exciting so you already have the choice made for you. So that's what I did. And I want to share it with all of you so that I can check in back this time next year to see how I did. So... Welcome to my spreadsheet, please try not to touch anything. As you can see, I have each game alongside my personal level of excitement, the how long to beat time for the main story, so I know the minimum time commitment if I want to roll credits. I have a box to write down all my thoughts on the game to help me remember the experiences, and then some boxes for if I complete the games, when I did it, and how long it took me. Now the boxes I really want to draw attention to are excitement and how long to beat. These are the key to making the decision process far easier. For excitement, I literally just think, how much do I want to play this, and then write down a percentage. That just makes things easier for me to understand at a glance, and gives me a bit more granularity than, say, 1 to 10. The time to beat is equally as important, because sometimes I want to get started with an RPG that I'm going to sink hundreds of hours or more into, and sometimes I want to play something over the course of a couple of weeks that'll only actually take me around 10 hours in total. Also, obviously, I can add something onto the list that technically doesn't have a time to beat. Like, technically, I can play Total War or Stellaris forever, so I can just make a note of when I feel I'm done and write down my thoughts of however much I played. It all really depends on what I'm doing at the time, and this system lets me account for that, which I love. As you can see, I've already filled this up with quite a large number of games already. Honestly, probably more than I can complete between now and next year, especially considering that, you know, things continue to come out and things that I want to play. We've got to just remember that this is an ongoing journey. There's no deadline for this sort of thing other than, you know, when I die. Hopefully that won't be next year, fingers crossed. I think next year I'll make a note of how many games I completed that year so that I can then compare that, see how I did year on year. Who doesn't love statistical comparisons of your hobby after all? Now you may also notice that some games already have something written in their thoughts section because I've already been working on some of these games I've been playing recently. So I've been adding notes as I go so that things are more fresh in my mind. If I write on everything at the end of a 100 hour playthrough, then I'll probably forget something that I enjoyed. You may also notice that I haven't wrote completed in any of the completed boxes because no matter how hard I try, I end up jumping between games all the time, meaning I can never end up really completing anything, which sucks and is annoying and I'm trying to stop doing it. That being said, for this list, I don't need to complete anything to any specific percent. In the video post Backlog Project, Daryl talks about how if he wasn't enjoying a game, he could just stop playing it because, you know, the entire point of this thing is to have fun, not to force yourself to play something that you don't enjoy. So if I'm enjoying the game, I can either play it until I'm completed the main story, or I get bored. 100%, it doesn't matter what it is. There is no one goal for anything. I just need to play these games, and whether I abandon them or get to 100%, they're cleared from my backlog. Hence the status column. And I'm not just trying to stop this hopping around because it means that things never get completed and I forget where I am each time I loop back around. There's actual research, again, this is laid out in Daryl's video, which you should really watch because he explains it 
much better than this guy. H-Bomber guy, please don't content nuke me. I'm telling him to watch his video because mine is not a replacement in any way, okay? I'm just kind of inspired by his thing. And I want to make my thing. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Love you. That shows when you don't complete something, it distracts you from pretty much everything in your life. No, you don't just feel distracted from similar tasks like other games. Distracted from anything. However, apparently, making a plan is almost as good as finishing tasks in some cases. So I'm to aim for two birds with one stone and hope that you hit anything at all. And therein lies the reason that I'm making this video and this backlog project thing at all. I want to make a plan of how to attack these games that I want to play. And by making a video, the channel, you, and of course myself, can all hold me responsible. Because I've laid out the steps I need to take and I need to follow up next year. If I literally play nothing, my follow up video is going to be 15 seconds long. And honestly, pretty embarrassing. Again, I don't want to make this into work, but I do want to have an incentive to follow up on this. Otherwise, it's just a waste of Google Drive storage space. Speaking of which, if you want to download a template of this, I'll link one down below because this is really something that I encourage everyone with the same problem that I have to try out. Also, this specific approach to clearing a backlog isn't limited to just video games. You can adjust this list for pretty much anything that you want to do. I added two more sheets for recipes and movies and TV. I watched The Bear and Hannibal, two very different shows, but they both had a lot of cooking scenes in them. Really got inspired to finally learn how to cook beyond just making a mean pot of boiling water. My girlfriend bought me some cookbooks for my birthday and Christmas, so now I'm going to go through and make a note of any recipes I want to try. And when I feel the desire to cook something, I can come here and more easily make a choice rather than going through forever, never actually deciding and just ordering Domino's. And then movies and TV. Currently, just have Avatar 2 because I want to watch it with my dad when it came out in cinemas like I did the first one when I was 10, but I'm an adult now, so we're both too busy and we don't live together anymore, so it becomes a bit of an event even to sit down together to watch. We could really do this sort of thing for anything. If you want to take a karate class and get a yellow belt, Google how many hours it takes of class time and figure out how much of a time commitment is, put it in the list, bada boom, bada boom, when you get a free evening, go take a karate class. If you want to make some fancy cocktails, but by the time Friday night rolls around, you can't think of any, you can just make this list and then boom, boom, boom. You just pick whichever one you want at a glance. It's just that easy. And even beyond making decisions, if you just write down your thoughts on every single thing that you do at the end of each year, you can look back and remember every single thing that you've done and see how much you've accomplished, which is a nice thing to do. For example, last year I played God of War Ragnarok and I can tell you some vague plot details and I enjoyed it, but honestly, that's about it. Whereas Spider-Man 2, which if you ask me, isn't as good a game, yet I played it more recently, but without even trying to tell you what I remember, I can tell you what I thought because I wrote it, it's written down right there. Look, you can see what I think. This also helps stop me from replaying something just because I don't remember what happened. Say I want to play the sequel to something, I don't really need to go back and play the first one before I play the second one if I've already played the first one because I'll already remember. Or if I'm trying to go back and play something I've already abandoned, I'll remember why I abandoned it so I can then make a decision if I want to give it another try. Another pro tip, if you use the status bar to say, for example, not started, in progress and completed, you can then sort by the two columns to drop everything completed to the bottom and make the sheet easy to read when trying to find something new to play. Or you can just go to the bottom and reflect on all of you completed. Either way, it's all neatly organized for you. And while you're at it, why not make a counter of everything that you've completed? All right, we're getting a bit Google Sheets doc here, but you get my point. As you can see from my list, I have 35 games on there and I tried to be restrictive, only allowing like one game per series like Yakuza Kiwami because I've always wanted to try that series and the first one seems like the most logical place to start. However, I could probably add like four times more games, not even accounting for anything new that comes out in the next year. I'm gonna just have to approach it as gently as I can because if this becomes hundreds of games long and it just becomes the same problem as looking at my Steam library and wondering what to play. It needs to be small and it needs to be easy to digest. I'll add anything new that I really desperately want to play like Star Wars Outlaws for example when that comes out it'll probably be on here because you know Star Wars and if there's something I want to play but not right now I can always just make a backlog backlog that's games waiting to get on this list but just not right now. Never thought I would get quite as anal about video games but um here we are. Anyway I've rambled about spreadsheets for far too long already so I'll try to bring this to some sort of a conclusion by rattling off some reasons to do something like this, at least for me. So as a kid, I would play video games pretty much non-stop, like uh, I assume most of you. I'd get home from school and that's all I'd do for like eight hours straight until I went to sleep. As I got older, that time became less and less. I got more homework, uh, discovered the joys of talking to females, and of course, start this channel. That's right, folks. I love video games so much that I did everything I could to make it my job. And now that's a reality uh, and I could not be more grateful for everything that you've done and supported me over the years. So thank you so very much from the bottom of my soul for watching and supporting me for all this time so far. I literally could not do this without you. Otherwise it'd be me just shouting at a camera and no one would watch it and that's quite sad. But getting busy means I've kind of become distanced from a lot of games. I play a couple of hours a night with my friends, but single player games have kind of fallen off the face of the earth for me. 
outside of the holidays. By organizing and making a conscious effort to play more single player games, I hope that I can catch up on some of the things I've missed. Plus, there are some outstanding games out there that I've never gotten to even try, and I don't want to miss out on that. I still love video games, and I want to experience as much of the best ones as I can. And the second reason is that I want to share my experiences with you on anyone else that will listen. By making and filling out the list as I go, either next year or at regular intervals throughout the year if I feel like it, I can tell you what I've been playing and what I thought about it, and hopefully talk about some of the games I truly love along the way. Game reviews are something that I really enjoy making, and as much fun as it is shitting all over CA and Total War, A, hopefully they act in their recent statement so I won't have to do that as harshly anymore, and two, talking about things that I love and feel passionate about makes me feel good. I have two massive passion projects in the works I hope to share with you at some time in the new year if I ever finish making them. Now, I'm not saying that I'm leaving strategy games and guides, I still love helping people figure out these seemingly inaccessible games, and to be honest with you, it helps me figure out how to play them as well. I'm going into the mindset of a total beginner because, let's be honest, most of the time that's what I am. I just maybe want to branch out a bit. And I think that I say this every year, so we'll see if I actually do it this time. Fingers crossed. If this year, especially the Total War stuff this year has taught me anything, it's that no matter how much faith you have in anything, it can fail. So by spreading out some of that faith and passion, I'm in a much better place in every sense of the word. So yeah, hopefully expect some more exciting projects very, very soon. One more thank you from the bottom of my heart for your support over this last year, and I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season. No video link for this one, just have a great rest of your day.